welcome for anyone that's new to the group. I know we have a lot of new members in the group. Welcome, welcome. Every single Monday, we're here at 7 p.m. Eastern time to bring you some gold, some value, uh, and some insights from either myself or Marissa or our amazing guests. And tonight, we have Greg in the house. Uh, Greg Todd is a physical therapist and healthcare business coach, and more importantly, uh, he is a good friend and really uh, a mentor. Uh, my first, my first real mentor uh, about five years ago now. And uh, this live stream, this training, this group, uh, and everything that we've done would not exist if it weren't for for this guy right here. So, Greg, I uh, just want to say thank you and thank you for being here tonight. I'm super excited to have you on. Man, thank you. I'm proud of what you have done. Proud of what Marissa has done. Just, just super honored, bro. Super honored. Awesome. Awesome. No, yeah. Thank, thank you so much. So uh, for, for those of you that are jumping on right now, um, say hello. Say hello in the chat. Uh, I want to see who, who we're speaking to. Uh, when you comment in the chat, either if you're live, hashtag live, if you're on the replay, hashtag replay, what that does is that it actually shows everyone in this group that there's about to be some fire in here. So, so if you want to help people out, if you want to be able to help everyone in this community uh, to also listen, listen to the goal that you're about to listen to tonight, uh, then go ahead and comment as much as you can so that others in here could know that there's a party. All right, cool. Uh, we got Paul in the house. We got Kim in the house. We got Kat in the house. Awesome. So good to see you all. So, so Greg, what's up, Paul? What's up, yeah. Kat? What's up, Kim? What's up, Amanda? Come on now, y'all. Awesome. Let's get it. It's Monday and it's time to move, baby. It's Monday, baby. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Awesome. Uh, Greg, would you mind just sharing a little bit, for those who don't know who you are, just a little bit about yourself, your story, and uh, how we got to where we are today. Yeah. So uh, I'm a physical therapist uh, for the past 21 years. Uh, graduated from Florida International University. I had absolutely no desire, no aspirations to do anything but physical therapy. I actually became a physical therapist because my mother was a medical transcriptionist and worked for an orthopedic surgeon. Uh, and I wanted to work nine to five. I thought I would get my two and a half kids, the white picket fence and a dog named Sparky. And that's all I wanted y'all. And I didn't want to do what my father did. My father uh, left the Miami Herald, which is a newspaper company. And he uh, started to work for a financial services company. And I saw the ups and downs of entrepreneurship. And I was like, there's no way I'll ever do that. And so, so basically fast forward to 2000, I become a physical therapist. 2004, I find myself in marital issues, not because anybody was doing anything crazy in the marriage or anything like that, but I wasn't present. And I wasn't giving my wife and our youngest child, our only child at the time, and my wife was pregnant with our second child, I wasn't giving them time. I was working uh, six days a week. I was also working on the tennis tour and there was no end in sight for my situation to improve. So I think that's the first thing that is important for you all to understand. Uh, I feel like every single day you should wake up with hope. You should, you should wake up with hope that if, like I'm working every single day for my situation to become better, whether that is uh, improving your income situation, that is improving your relationships, that's having more time, that is building a mission or building, you know, a movement of a certain audience that is serving clients the way you want to serve them. All those things can bring you hope. And in 2004, I didn't have any hope. And when you lose hope, that's when things get really bad. That's when people do really bad things. And I lost it. I'm just being honest with y'all. I lost it. I lost it on a Saturday morning. It was, it was not fun. Uh, uh, I was frustrated. I felt defeated. And my wife basically just gave me an ultimatum and said, look, if you don't fix this situation, uh, I'm out. So on Monday, I, uh, told my boss, I have one request. I've crushed it for you guys. I just want to go from a five day week to a four day week. I'll work 12 hours a day, four days a week. That's 48 hours. They're paying me 40 hours salary. And if you do that, we're good. My boss said, no, the Tuesday morning, I put in my notice. And that day, 
the first lesson I learned was uh, never say never. <laughs> never say never. So that day, I decided that we were going to put a loan, where to you know, uh, get a line of credit on my house, took out a $100,000 loan. And that was the day that I made the decision to go into entrepreneurship. So fast forward to today, uh, I make a lot of money. I'm a multimillionaire. I have multiple businesses. I have uh, a couple clinics in Tampa Bay. I'm like a, a I'm gonna call it, I'm like a silent owner, you know, a, a silent partner with those. I do coaching and consulting. Uh, I have a virtual staffing agency in the Philippines and uh, I invest. And that's how I make my money today. And I have been able to buy back my time with the money. I've been able to um, buy impact, buy influence. Yeah, all those things. I bought it. <laughs> I bought it all. I bought it and I bought it, uh, it just, just understanding that money allows you to buy back your time. And I use the time to gain the impact. I use the time to gain the influence. I use the time to serve people, many, many, many people, Javi and Marissa are included. And I've used that to make the world better. So I'm really bullish on making money. And as a healthcare professional, we think making money is taboo. And I'm here to tell you that that is a poor man or poor woman's way of looking at it. And you are not going to make a lot of impact if you don't understand the power of what making a good amount of money can actually do for you, for your audience, for your family, for your community, for your church, for so many people. So that's my story and I'm sticking to it. Amazing. Yeah. Um, you know, I think, I think for, for so many reasons, we, we've been trained, conditioned to believe that that money is the root of all evil. And, you know, ultimately we hear people saying all the time, well, I don't really care about making a lot of money. And, you know, I always say like, whatever you don't care about doesn't stick around. So we have to be very cautious with, with the words that we say, the things that we say. Cause if I told Marissa, Hey, Marissa, I don't really care about you that much. Guess what? She's out the door, right? She's not coming back. And, and that's essentially what we do with money. And it's one of those things that, like you mentioned, it's not about the money, right? It's a means to an end. It's about what it can do for you and, and what it can truly, truly help you do for other people. Um, and I think that's, that's one of the biggest limiting factors for so many. Um, yeah. And, you know, you're the one that, that, that taught me, Greg, like you should want to make as much money as humanly possible, right? Yeah, <laughs> but, yeah. But, but it's true though, Javi, yeah. because at the end of the day, you have to understand how, like, y'all, come on, let, let's, can we just break this down real quick? I mean, I mean seriously, can, let's just break this down. Okay, number one is this. Uh, you're not making money if you're not impacting people, unless you're doing it illegal. So I'm not in the illegal business. I'm not slanging dope. I'm not slanging rock. I, I ain't pimping nobody out. Y'all, I make my money ethically. I make my money by serving God's children which is you and it's me. I want you to serve me and I want to serve you. So let's just understand that nobody's giving you any money unless you're doing that. So do you not want to serve God's children? All right, okay, so that's the first part. All right, now let's get to the second part. When you have the money that allows you to be able to create experiences, not just for yourself, but for other people. I was just telling Javi last week I was on vacation. I was on vacation in a place that I used to live. Both Javi and myself used to live in South Florida. Okay. And I said to Javi, I said, Javi, you know what's so crazy? Over the last 10 years, I've been going back to Miami every single year. Now, you guys got to understand something. I was born in Jamaica. I left Jamaica when I was four months old. My parents came here. I've lived in Miami from basically four months to I was 20 four years old. Okay. 20, yeah. Or, tw or yeah. 24, 25. I lived in mine. Let me tell you guys something. When I got the opportunity to move to Tampa, I did it in a heartbeat. You want to know why? Cause I was like, Miami sucks. Guess what? Miami doesn't suck. <laughs> you want to know what the issue was? I didn't have money. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't do anything in Miami. All I had to do is basically go to work, 
bring my little peanut butter jelly sandwich, come home, watch Golden Girls, watch Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, and then go back and do it again over and over and over again in my White River Park. But today, I can go to South Beach. I can enjoy myself. Here, yo, you know what? Because I don't mind talking about it. So I'm going to tell you all what happened on Thursday. Thursday, right? Thursday, we go to South Beach, and we go to a nice breakfast right on the ocean. Okay, then we went out for lunch after that. And then we came back to our Airbnb on Brickell Avenue and watched Love is Blind on Netflix. Fantastic, by the way. All right. Then after that, we went to the Versace Mansion. After we went to the Versace Mansion and we ate there, it was absolutely amazing. Then our kids are like, hey, daddy, can you take us to an ice cream shop? My daughter, my daughter who got $80 for Christmas, my daughter says, daddy, can you give me $20? I left my money at the Airbnb. Can you give me $20? I'll pay you back. I was like, okay. I didn't know why. She went and she found a homeless person and gave them their $20. And she paid me back. My daughter has taken her money that she got for Christmas, $80. And she took 60 of it. She's already given to people that she knew that weren't as fortunate as her. You guys, that to me is like the most epic day. That day does not happen without money. Oh, it's so cool that you're able to give to people. Yeah, you need money. Oh, it's so cool that you're able to serve all these people in healthcare for a year and a half for free. You guys think I'm the nicest person in healthcare? No, I'm the one that has the most money. <laughs> yeah. Like, seriously, if, if we can get over the taboo of money, then we can understand that money is a reward that we get for actually serving people at a high level. And then when we have the money, we can actually use the money to buy back our time. Right now, we are in a nation of peril. Our families are being destroyed. Why? Because we're not able to invest in our family the way that we did when we started the family. Why? Because we're not money. Our health is being destroyed. We've literally gone through one of the biggest health crises we've ever gone through as in a nation. What, what are we doing now? With Listen, if, if you have money, you can actually buy back time to be able to invest in your health. Because of your lack of having good health, you have really low energy. And when you have low energy, nobody wants to work with you. How do you solve that? Well, a lot of that can be solved with a little money to be able to buy back your time. So you guys, like I'm very, very comfortable saying money's a good thing. The issue is stewardship. Some people are going to use money. They're going to make it rain at the club. I'm not doing that. I'm using my money, and I'm using that my money to actually impregnate the money to go make more babies with the money. I'll do that, and I'm using the money to actually bless other people and basically invest in them so they can actually go and fulfill out the mission that I have that is collectively our mission together. So that's stewardship. But money is not bad. That's all I got to say. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that's all folks. That's, that's what we got for tonight. No. That's it. <laughs> Bye. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> yeah, no. So, so, so good, uh, Greg. And, and for those that, you know, are, are on here right now, number one, say hello. Uh, number two, I I'd love to hear, you know, what your, what your thought about money is and, and what are those things that, that come up for you specifically? Um, what are some of those thoughts that kind of block you from, from moving forward with, with feeling good about making more money? Because I think it's so important to talk about it. And I think for, for so many of us, like listening to, to what Greg just said, like that's, it's so, so real. And until we make that shift, like it's really hard. You know, I always say um, that if our beliefs and our desires are, are on opposite sides of the same coin, you know, we're going to, we're going to self-sabotage and we're never going to get the things that we really want in life. So if you desire to have a better life, to have the dream home, to not be able to worry about things in life, but at the same time, you have this belief that, you know, money is evil, money is bad, then you're never going to get there. And, and that's why it's so, so important to really take in what Greg just mentioned, what Greg just, you know, taught us and, and let that sink in and, and really, you know, reflect on that. Cause that's, that's it. That's, that's it right there. Your ability to serve more people at a much higher level all stems from getting through this and getting past that. So, um, so just wanted to re re reiterate how important that is. Um, so good, Greg. I, I think I think one of the big things that we have to understand is that um, there is with 
to impact and then there's depth of impact right mm -hmm. so 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 here's what i mean by that um every day i have to wake up because i'm a okay with money and b i understand the different types of impact width and depth right for instance uh probably most of the people that are on this they're not my customers per se right they're your customers uh but i'm hoping that because i've been able to invest time with you today uh there's something that i'm going to say maybe one nugget maybe something that you're going to reflect on that's going to make you say you know what that actually impacted me right and that's mm -hmm. width okay now there are certain people for instance i think when it comes to depth i look at you right you're someone that i impacted maybe through my podcast initially back in 2015 or 2016 mm -hmm. and then over time we get to know each other we actually get to work with each other you know um you're in my program you know all that good stuff and look at the depth that you have gone on to create and the depth that marissa has gone on to create and how many people you all has have inspired dietitians you know um and, and so many others in healthcare and look at what you've gone on to do. But none of that happens without investing of your time and your energy and your money, right? I mean, that's really what it comes down to. I think that's the first thing. I think the second thing that, that I think everybody needs to think of is this. Uh, the way that I said it the other day is, it's not the size of the load you carry, it's the method in which you carry it. And here's what I mean by that, you guys. Uh, a lot of us in healthcare only know how to trade time for money. So when we think of impacting more, yeah, it sounds good on paper, right? But when we think of impacting more, we're like, oh my gosh, this is gonna overwhelm me. It's mm -hmm. gonna be too much. So blessings and opportunities are coming your way, but a lot of times you close yourself off to it because you're so worried about the size of the load and you never ask yourself, is the method that I'm carrying this just not good? Mm. You guys, I can have like, like right now, my neighbor, they're getting ready to blow down their house to build a new house, okay? And when they start to bring sand to the house and they're bringing all that cement to the house, I mean, it's gonna be a lot, okay, for that house. It's gonna be a lot of, if we bring it, in a bag in like you know little shopping bags y'all it's gonna take forever <laughs> okay right if we bring it in a wheelbarrow it's gonna be a little bit more efficient but if we bring it in a tractor in a huge truck we're gonna be able to take so much of that over in one shot and i think for most of us in healthcare not only are we not comfortable with money but we're actually not comfortable in how we're delivering value to people hmm. we only know how to do it be in front of someone at all times. And any other way is not the way I learned. And because of that, I think those things hold us back and it holds us back from helping uh, the amount of people that we really should be able to help. Yeah, and and you know, it's so interesting because I see a lot of, a lot of, and it's, it's, it's interesting, but it's also sad. A lot of people wanting to really get out of healthcare altogether and do something completely different. And I think, I think, you know, a big part of it is, is understanding that, hey, maybe it's not the thing, the profession that you're in, but a lot of the times it could be just the environment you're in and how you're forced to do the things that you need to do where, right. where you don't really are, where you're not really in alignment with that. So I right. think it's always kind of taking a look at that as well. And, and it's exactly what you, you know, part of what you said that, hey, you just need to do things a little bit different, different environment, maybe a different method, different way of serving people. Um, right which I think is, is so, so key. So, you know, with, there's a couple, a couple questions that I, that I have for you. Cause I know, um, you know, I was watching one of your trainings the other day and you talked about inflation and, yep. and I, I think it's important for everyone to realize what is actually happening right now. And, you know, Marissa and I were, were talking the other day. It's like, we're so lucky. <laughs> I, I didn't even know what the gas prices were. <laughs> right. I was right. like, damn, gas is like almost $5 right now. It's crazy. I, that's, it's not why, that's not why we bought an electric vehicle, but I'm so happy that we did <laughs> but, a yeah. few months ago. Um, but, but inflation, like it's one of those things that a lot of people don't talk about and don't really understand. So maybe you can give us some insight into, into that and why it's so important for us to take this serious. Yeah, I mean... I think there's a couple of things. If you look at prices over the last year, 
uh, here is what has happened. Uh, used cars have gone up 41.2%. Gasoline has gone up 38%. That's as of last week. <laughs> okay, okay. Maybe it's 40 now. Gasoline utilities have gone up 23.8%. Uh, meat, fish, eggs have gone up over 13%. New cars, 12.4%. Electricity, just under 10%. Food, your grocery bill on a whole is 9%. That's in the last year. Wow. So now let's talk about the projections. Whoa, that was just the last year. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's going to turn around real quick. Well, you guys, there's a lot going on right now, if you haven't heard. Okay? But we have a lot of turmoil that's going on in our nation and outside of our nation. I mean, you guys see what's going on right now in Russia and Ukraine and our role in it and what's happening with our now shortened supply of oil, and which is the reason why we're get, we were getting oil from Russia, which is the reason why we are now not getting that from Russia anymore. And we're having to find other places. We're looking at trying to get Venezuela. We're looking at trying to open up our uh, you know, oil mines that we have here. You guys, it's, a, it's kind of a train wreck right now. And, um, and they really don't care if your employer doesn't want to give you a 5% raise. It doesn't really matter. Okay. So this is not, uh, I think when people think of making more money, they think of, oh, I'm making more money for greed. Hmm. What I'm here trying to tell you is that we're getting to a point in our world where you have to make this money for mere survival. Wow. And I, and I don't think people understand that. The problem is this. So, so, so why are all these things happening? Let, let's kind of talk about it. Why is this happening? This is happening because of this thing called supply and demand. Supply and demand. If you guys take nothing from today's call, please, by the way, please put this in the chat section right now. Because I know when you put it, you'll remember it. The one thing I want you to put is supply and demand. So those prices that I just gave you, those percentage increases, it's because there is a lack of supply. And because there is a lack of supply and the supplier understands that, then they say, look, since we don't have as much to sell, we have to sell everything more for a higher percentage amount. You guys follow me with that? That's the reason why. So if you all understand supply and demand, it's also called deal flow. Then you can understand and make that work for you. So now let's go back to healthcare. The reason why healthcare professionals are struggling is because of supply and demand. But hold on, y'all ready for it? Yup, y'all ready to be mind blown? The reason why certain healthcare professionals are freaking crushing it is because of supply and demand. All right. Should I go in a little bit more with this? Go, go in. Let, let's ask, let, let's ask the, let's ask the people. Should, should Greg go in a little bit more with this? Put a big yes in the chat if you want him to keep on going. We got supply guys, and demand, is... supply and demand. Yep, yep. Okay, cool. All awesome. right, guys. So here, so, okay. So, so here's a view. So why is it that people are struggling because of supply and demand in healthcare? And then why is it that there are certain people that are killing it because of the same concept. Okay. So here's how this works. The people that are struggling right now in healthcare because of supply and demand are doing the same, have the same skills. They're serving the same people that the rest of the supply is serving. So for every registered dietitian out there that's working in the traditional settings, well, the truth is, is that there's, even though the magazines might say, oh, there's plenty of you, there, there's, there's enough of you that are doing that. So because of that, you don't have a lot of pull when it comes to your pay increasing because your skill set is very similar to everyone else's skill set. Now, here's how they get you. They say, hey, if you get this certification, if you get that certification, you get this one, you get that one, you're going to be unique in your skill set. But the reality is, is that there's still enough people that have that skill set to where the supply is not depleted. 
there's enough out there. If you don't want to take the job for 60,000 or 70,000, we'll find somebody else to take it for 65. You guys follow me so far? Okay. So the people that are really crushing, they understand supply and demand. And what they've said is, hey, what's in short supply? You guys want to know what's in short supply? Things that are in short supply are having a unique set of skills, skills that you didn't learn in school, marketing skills, sales skills, innovation skills, and being able to take those communication skills along with those ability to create skills and tie them together. And if you can do that and you can create influence and you can create impact, well, now you stand out as a registered dietitian. Now you stand out as a nutrition coach. But if you don't have that, well, that means that you're not in the small echelon of people that do have it, which means that you are in demand. But those people that are, everybody wants to work with us. The companies, the supply companies, I'm talking about like supplements or anything that you all use. These people, a lot of them don't have the skills of marketing, of sales, of influence. So they want to team up with you. They want to, they're begging to give you money because they realize you have skill that most dietitians don't have. So now you're able to name your price in the marketplace. So it's the same theory. It's supply and demand. It's a supply and demand either working for you or it's working against you. You have to choose. Man. Last, last words there. You have to choose, meaning you have a choice. And I think, I think that's so key. You're, you do have control over, over what that looks like for you. Um, so Greg, what do, what, do people, what do people need to understand then um, along with all of that? Because that's, that's, I, feel, I feel like that's, that's a big part of it. But is there anything else when it, comes to, when it comes to raising your income? What if we had to break it down into like the top three things that people need to understand in order to be able to do that, what, what would you say those are? Uh, I think people have to understand the principles behind money and raising your income. I think people have to understand the habits that you're going to need to have mm. on a consistent basis that are going to allow your income to be able to be, guys, guys, I'm not talking about percentage. I'm not into percentage. I'm into exponential. I'm talking about X. I don't like to put percentages. I like X. So if you want a 2x, 3x, 4x, your income, you're going to have to understand the habits that go with that. And then I think the final thing is you're going to have to understand that in order for you to be able to impact more people, which will essentially increase your income, there's only three ways you can do it. Can I, should I just tell them three? Yeah. yeah I, I mean, it's, I mean, guys, it's pretty simple or at least, I mean, I think it's simple, but maybe, but maybe it's not. I don't know. Anyways, there's three ways to do it. You can either increase the amount of customers that you have. You can increase the frequency of how much you are serving those customers. Or you can increase the price. Like, that, like that's it. Like, there, like there, there you go. Business coaching, done for the day, okay? Like, <laughs> there's only three things you can do. That's it. Three things. Increase the amount of customers. Increase the frequency of how many times you're serving that customer. Or increase the price. Like, in my... One of my businesses, we're up 158% this year, right? And, and, and have we increased the amount of customers this year? Nope. Nope, actually we haven't. Have we increased the frequency of serving the customers? Uh, about 8%. Well, how did we get the 158%? Well, we increased the price. And how do you increase the price? You think you just increase the price because you're Greg Todd? No, you increase the price because you are bringing so much more value to the customer. You find more ways to be able to serve your customer better. Here's the problem. The problem is that in school, they never went over how to actually talk to your potential customer so that you will find out their problems, their pains, their frustrations, their fears, their dreams, their aspirations. And then you can start to provide solutions around those issues. They, they never taught us that. It's as simple as that. And, and you know what else they didn't teach us? They didn't teach us how to eat humble pie. Hmm. Here's what I mean by that. We have an obligation 
that when we're serving people to actually find out from them, how did I do? And what could I have done better? And what I realized, and I thought this was just in PT, but, but, but I realized now with working a lot of artists, it's the same thing. It's the same thing with OTs. It's the same thing with chiropractors. They have literally taught us to inflate our ego and never ask people, what did we do that we could have done better? And if you really think about it, think about the most amazing businesses out there. By the way, Tesla was not the first electric vehicle. Amazon wasn't the first bookstore. Apple wasn't the first computer. But what they did is they continued to find out from the market, what is it that I could do better? And they ate humble pie. Hmm. And when you find that out and you find out from your audience, what can I do better? And you're humble enough to actually find that out. Well, you're able to make improvements and that's how you're able to destroy the competition. Healthcare, I've never, ha- I've never had any professor teach me that. Yeah. By the way, for those of you here that are on right now, have you had anyone teach you that in any traditional schooling? And if you don't know those things, then you will never be able to raise the price. If you don't know those things, you're never going to be able to increase the frequency on the amount that you're serving people unless you're doing it in an unethical way. If you don't know those things and you can't bring more value to people and you can't increase the price of people, or I'm, I'm sorry, um, you know, increase the value of the price, you can't increase the frequency. Well, then how are you going to really get more customers? Hmm. It's going to be hard because eventually people are going to be like, hey, h- hey, how is it to work with such and such? Meh. Yeah. You guys, this is a game. This is a competition. The competition is who can serve who better. And the person that serves, what you guys, hey, let me answer this. For those of you that are on now, tell me in days the last time you ordered something from Amazon. <laughs> Come on, go ahead and put it in the comment section. Tell me in days the last time you ordered something from Amazon. I'll say yesterday. <laughs> okay, yesterday. Yeah. Not this morning. <laughs> Not, not this morning, right? That's a shocker, right? It's a shocker. It, no, I think, it, I think if not this morning, I think we're actually if not, not this morning. This morning. <laughs> okay. All right, all right. <laughs> yeah. You know, so it's, it's, it's so crazy, Javi, because it's like, this is a company. This is a company that basically was like, you know what? I mean, I, mean, I remember this. I remember this like in 2002, 2003. This company would send us emails. Like back then I had this old school email address. And it was actually the one from, from FIU, solix.fiu.edu. I don't know if you remember that. Okay, I, don't know. Okay, all right. I don't know, man. I, look, man, I'm an old head from FIU. So I had like the old email address, but I still had that email address. And I remember Amazon used to say, hey, um, what if we created this? What if and they, they got feedback all the time? What if we did this? What if we did that? They asked us to fill out surveys. I'm sure most people didn't fill it out, but the ones that did, we gave them feedback. You guys, they had this thing locked in. They had it locked in because they cared more about their customers than they cared about their ego. Hmm. And they now serve us with everything. We buy everything from them. I mean, look at what you guys are saying in the comment section. Like, like I think everybody right now is looking at Kim, Kim Lupar like, wow, 21 days. Wow, we're, we're probably, we feel like, Kim, you should probably create a course. You should probably create a course in restraint. You know? <laughs> Just, I mean, you're amazing. I'm so inspired by you. I'm more like Eileen. I'm more like, like, I mean, shoot, cat. Wow, 80 days? Good wow. grief. That's well, impressive. Hey, Javi, have you noticed this? Every single person so far hasn't gone more than three months without giving those people money. Wow. Isn't that crazy? Hey, wow. I, mean, I, mean, I mean, I mean, ain't that something? That is crazy. It's crazy time. So, you guys, this is the thing. What are these people doing? Success leaves clues. Hmm. they're doing everything that we weren't taught yeah we're taught to serve our client we're taught to serve the patient but we're never taught to ask them what they want and what they don't want and what did i give you that you actually don't want and what can i do after this and what should i have done before this hey can you can can you help me get more customers can you help me get more people like you Guys, these are all things 
that are essential to business. These are all things that, not just the business, these are things that are essential to if you want to serve more. But hey, if you don't want to make more money, well, that means you don't want more impact. And hey, if you don't want no, no more impact, well, that means you're not going to ask these questions. You know, and that's fine, but you just got to have to, you have to live with what you have, you know? Yeah. For, for those of you that are like, no, no, Greg, I, I want to raise my income. Go ahead and put raise my income in the chat right now. It's like, no, Greg, listen, listen, listen. I need to raise my income. Put raise my income in the chat. <laughs> Understand and, this. Yeah. If, if you're going to raise your income, that means you're going to have to raise your impact. Mm. And the way you're going to raise your impact is by helping more people, by increasing the frequency of the amount of people you're helping, or by actually raising up your prices. And the only way you should ever raise up your prices ethically is if you find more ways to give more people value. That's it. So all those three ways that I just told you allows you to raise your impact. Your income is in line with your impact. If you're really struggling with your income right now, that means that you're not impacting a lot of people. Oof. That's the first thing. Okay, it's not your boss. It might be the system that your boss has you under, but essentially it is your responsibility. You are not helping a lot of people. Yeah. And I know that's things, but that's just reality. That's just reality. You're not helping a lot of people. What I will say to you all is that um, I don't, look, it is your responsibility, but at the same time, I will give you the benefit of the doubt. Like for me, you are not trained mm -hmm. to be able to do this. So that's the reason why, you know, you have people like us is to show you. I, and, and by the way, I wasn't trained either, right? But, you know, I got to a point in my life where I said enough is enough. Enough is enough. I've got to learn how to do this. And, and I can tell you that it, it's, it, I'm not saying it was easy, but I also am going to be very honest with you. It was no harder than anything I've ever gone through in school. Mm. So true. Yeah. I tell, I tell everyone like you're, you know, business is hard, but you're already used to working hard. And at least, at least there's, there's a, like a, a path to not having to, at some point, if, if that's what you want, which I don't think anyone really wants that, but, but at the end of the day, it's, it's, you know, you're already used to working so hard and right. doing something you hate, right? right. Imagine yeah, yeah, yeah. it was something yeah. you loved. Like how awesome right. would that be every single day? Every single you know day. what I'll even say too, Harvey, I'll, I'll say business is hard, but working in the traditional way is muscle hard. Mm. It's physically exhausting. Yeah. And you, when you get physically exhausted, you start to get mentally and emotionally exhausted. I, and I mean, that's just, that was just me. Like I was physically exhausted from working in the traditional way that I was working as a healthcare profession. I was physically exhausted. Once I got physically exhausted, when you hit that, you, like, ha, like have any of y'all ever run like a, a, a half marathon or, or better yet, have any of y'all run a full marathon? You, okay, so here, let me kind of give you the little thing on it, all right? I, I, I can figure Wait, it out. Have you? Okay. I know, I said I can so, figure it out. That's why I haven't done it yet. <laughs> okay, 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 all right, all right. Well, well, let me just reinforce this to you, Mr. Okay. Javi. All right, so, so, he, so here's the deal, bro. The deal is, is that, you know, look, if you train, if you train, you can do it, right? Okay, yeah. I've done four of them. What typically happens around the 16 to 19 mile mark is you start to get physically exhausted. But when you hit that physical exhaustion level, it then, it's so, it's so fast that it goes from physical to emotional to mental. And you're mentally exhausted. Okay. That is not how business is. Hmm. Business is not physically exhausting. Business, to me, is mentally tiresome. And what, and, and what I mean by that is I'm having to unlearn a lot of bad habits and bad patterns that I had for so much of my childhood through elementary school, through middle school, high school, college, and then into my career as, for me, a physical therapist. So I'm having to unlearn a lot of things that actually were making me physically exhausted. 
That's the mental part. Yeah. It's actually, so that's a part that's exhausting. It's having to unlearn and relearn things. But I wouldn't even say it's exhausting. It's more tiring. Mm -hmm. Okay. What I can say is that I've never been physically exhausted trying to raise my income. I'm more mentally having to like remove the blocks that I've had that have actually made me physically exhausted. So business was actually easy. Yeah. Now, I'm not saying it's easy. I'm just saying it was easier. And I, I've never had a day harder than what I had when I was working for someone and having no option of ever raising my income. That was a problem. Yeah. Yeah, I 100% agree. And I think for, for so many people watching right now who might be in that in between where, you, where you're working your nine to five and you're also growing your business, it's like, you know, it's a lot of people say, oh, it's so tiring. It's so exhausting. It's like, it's not that. It's everything else you're doing throughout the day, <laughs> right? right? And then trying to add that on yeah. top of it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be a little bit tiring. But, but again, it, like, it's not, it's, it, like you said, Greg, I think it's, it's just, it, it is easier uh, in that if, again, you're doing what you love, you're passionate about it, right? And, and you can see like, hey, this is actually going to take me to where I want to go as long as I put the work in, then, right. oh my goodness, right? All day, you know? So yeah. sometimes I, I love going to bed early, but sometimes when I'm on it and I'm like, man, I, I'm just, I'm fired up right now. I can work on whatever I'm working on for the rest of the evening, the rest of the, 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 right. the day, the night and, and be totally fine. Uh, and it's a good feeling. So, so right. I think, I think that's, you know, just, just a couple, couple notes on that for, for those that, that feel that. Um, but I, 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 you know, and I'll say one other quick thing about that. Yeah. There are times where like I'm a big basketball fan mm. and uh, and my wife is a big HGTV fan. Okay. She loves, she loves flip or flop. By the way, they're canceling this show. So we'll just let y'all know. Okay. She loves, you know, um, well, you, they, they say I fix her up or this, that. Okay, cool. And whenever she's like, can you watch show with me? I'm like, eh, I'm tired, man. I'm kind of tired, you know, I'm tired. <laughs> right. <laughs> but if the if if like if like my favorite basketball team's playing, all of a sudden, I'm like, whoa, hmm. you guys, at the end of the day, the biggest thing I can tell you <clears throat> is that my energy level will go up immediately when it's something that I want to do. And we talk about money, we talk about impact. At the end of the day, you ain't gonna make any of it if you're not doing something that you want to do. Hmm. So if you're working for someone and it's actually a group of people you want to work with, but the way that you're doing it, you don't want to do it. Your energy is going to automatically, it's going to go down to, there's going to be no reservoirs. There's going to be nothing in a tank you can pull from. Okay. But if it's something that you want to do, if it's someone you want to work with and you're doing it in a way that feels good to you, you will be able to pull from energy sources that you never even knew were possible. And at the end of the day, that's all I want for people. Look, not everybody's going to be an entrepreneur. Not everybody. I mean, I think everybody could, mm -hmm. but not everybody's going to want to do it. That's fine. But I think that everybody deserves to be able to actually work in something that gives you joy. I, I mean, I don't know. I don't feel like that's too much to ask. Now, what I will say is that usually when you're passionate about something, you're curious. Mm. And when you're curious, you start to ask questions. And I know that when I'm curious about something, I want to know everything about it. And what I can tell you is that when you're curious, you ask questions. Well, that means that you're going to actually be able to find out problems that people have. Mm -hmm. And when you find out the problems that they have, you're going to be able to create solutions for it. And if you start creating solutions for it, you're going to raise your income. If you raise your <laughs> income, you're going to raise your impact. And you're going to be a happy camper. But it all starts with having passion for either the people that you are serving or how you are serving the people. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. It, it really does come back to that. And I think, you know, just to kind of recap everything and, and putting it together, I think the, the idea is that with those three levers that we can pull, right. To raise your income, like you mentioned, there's increasing your customers, increasing the frequency, the number of people, the number of times you see that customer and increasing your prices the the it's because I, I find so many people that 
they they even feel it like in the current system that they're currently working at in their job, right? They're working with people who are not motivated, who don't really want to be there, and they start feeling unfulfilled. And the reason right. kind of goes back to the idea that, hey, you don't have control of how you're able to serve them and in what capacity. And it all comes back from the, the customer not being really heard. And because of the inability to do that in a system like that, it ends up leaving everyone frustrated and underserved and everyone thinking, oh, like I tried that before, it didn't work for me or not even wanting to do it because of this perception. So I think it's everyone's, uh, everyone's obligation really to, if you really want to be the go-to provider, if you want, really want to be seen as the expert and the authority in the space, and if you're sick and tired of people getting all this misinformation or not thinking that, hey, this is valuable, it's all, it all comes back to us and our ability to, to educate people, you know, put a message out there that moves the masses and let them know, hey, listen, right, this, I'm actually listening to the problems that you have. And this is how, and, and I understand the problems that you have. And because of that, you know, I, I have these possible solutions to solve those problems. And I right. think it's just like this, this, this loop. And until we, until we kind of really think about this and realize, oh, wait a second, this, this is really that gap. And we put ourselves in there and we, and we decide, hey, listen, I'm going to go ahead and do this. And I'm going to be the one that solves these people's problems, but not the problems that I think they need solved, the ones that they tell me. It actually becomes really easy to create this. It really solution. does. It really it, does. It, it really becomes easy yeah. once you understand that, though. Uh, and yeah. uh, you hit the nail on the head. I mean, I think the only thing I would add to it is just yeah. understanding where you are closing off those loops. Sometimes we're actually like pinching the loop. We're not allowing that whole thing to happen. So mm -hmm. where, so where, so where are we closing it off? Is it, is it the part that we're not actually allowing the people to voice their concerns? Is mm -hmm. it the part that, wait a minute, I can't serve them because I have to serve people in this way. I have to do it in like, like, how, like where are we pinching the hose yeah. and not allowing that loop to actually work? And we just have to be, we just have to acknowledge it, you guys, you know, just acknowledge it. And, um, and yeah, I mean, that's really it. That's really yeah. it. Yeah. So good, Greg. Well, I know we're, we're coming to a, a close here and um, there's an amazing event, right? A couple events happening uh, yeah, in, the, yeah. in, in the next couple of weeks. And um, I'd love to, I'd love for you to share a little bit more about what the, uh, Five day challenge is all about who it's for, how it's going to help them, uh, and then I'll kind of share what else we're we're doing with that because uh, I think it's going to really help a lot of people here tonight uh, who are interested in learning uh, everything that Greg talked about tonight and how to actually put it into practice and and even go deeper on that uh, because ultimately, like you mentioned, Greg, like it's it's nothing that we've learned before, and it is the key to be able to uh, to raise your income and and raise your impact. So. Yeah. 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 So I'm going to be doing a five day challenge. I actually did it last year uh, and it went incredibly well. It's uh, the raise your income challenge. Basically, here's the deal, guys. Five days, you will be able to exponentially raise your income. OK. Uh, and will we be able to do it in five days? Well, we're going to definitely teach you the principles. <laughs> we'll teach you the skills. And I can tell you right now, you'll be ninety nine point nine nine percent further than any other registered dietitian on the planet by just learning what you're gonna learn in five days. So the way that I do it is I split it up into five different sections, one major section for each day. There's homework that goes along with each section so that you're doing it, you finish it, you go in a group with it every single day. And at the end of five days, you'll learn to follow. You'll learn the principles behind how to raise your income. You'll learn the habits on what you need in order to have your income be raised, not incrementally, not in percentages, but exponentially. You'll know by day three, you'll know the skills that you're going to need. And we'll actually work on those skills in day three that you're going to need to be able to actually raise your income. Uh, we talk about the value ladder and we kind of base the whole premise ar um, around that. By day four, we teach you the three different models in which you can use to raise your income and how you can raise your income without your time actually being tied to it. And then on day five, we teach you Okay, this is how you raise your income if you're working for somebody. This is how you raise your income if you work for yourself. This is how you raise your income if you have a practice. This is how you raise your income. If you, and we give you the different blueprints of how you actually do that for whatever discipline or whatever 
area you're in right now. At the end of the day, people that are broke want to raise their income. People that are kind of broke want to raise their income too. People that are doing okay want to raise their income so they're not just, you know, have enough money at the end of the month. People that are doing great, you know what they want to do? They want to raise their impact. Guess what? They're going to raise their income too. So look, I've been at all those different levels and I understand that when you're at each of those levels, there's different seasons you're dealing with. And so I just teach you, look, this is what I would do if I was at your level right now to be able to exponentially raise your income. So that's what you do over the five days and people love it. Awesome. Awesome. So for, for those of you that are ready to raise your income, go ahead and put raise your income uh, in the chat and I'll get you all the details. Uh, what's going to be so amazing about this. So I'm going to be a part of the challenge. So I already got my ticket uh, yesterday, as soon as the, or two days ago, as soon as the wait list came out, I'm like, I'm in, I'm in, let's get it. Uh, so I'm excited. Yeah, I'm stoked. I'm stoked. And uh, what we're doing is, is really special for, for anyone who ends up joining the raise your income challenge uh, come, that starts on Monday. Uh, what we're going to do is on Sunday, we're actually having like a, we can call it like a family reunion type of thing. You know, we're going to essentially it's, it's nutrition bizcon. Okay. The first of its kind. Uh, so, so we're going to go ahead cool. and uh, have nutrition bizcon on March 27th. So it'll be five days of pure fire. Uh, and really Greg teaching you how to, uh, raise your income and your impact. And then on Sunday, we're going to throw in nutrition BizCon, where we're going to dive in and uh, really help you map out uh, a roadmap, uh, give you a strategy and an action plan to take everything you learned that week and crush it in 2022. So if, if you're excited and you're ready to join us, go ahead and put raise your income in the chat and I'll send you all the details. Wonderful, wonderful, man. I love it. I love it. I love it. Awesome. Yeah, you guys, look, you, as I said, maybe 10 years ago, maybe 15 years ago. All right. I'm good, whatever. And, well, not anymore. I mean, not anymore. This is, the, to me, raising your income, like, like when I did this in 2005 and I was like, man, I got to go out on my own. Like, this is not working. That was more just because I realized that I'm kind of unemployable. I'm just being honest with y'all, you know? <laughs> um, you know, I, I wanted to do things my way. Now, if I had to do it over again, what I do? Yeah, I would have done it. I would have done it early. Okay, but today, is it really an option? You know, to me, I think if you're gonna decide, hey, I don't wanna raise my income, I think it's time for y'all to figure out how can I lower my expenses? And that's a game I don't wanna play. Mm. Like, cause what, cause what am I gonna do? Am I not gonna be able to have cheese now? Well, y'all dietitians, so maybe y'all think that's bad anyway. But you know what I mean? Like, like, like I mean, guys, like, what, like, what am I going to do? Like, how much can you lower your expenses? Like, how much lower can you go? I, I mean, I, I mean, we didn't even talk about real estate right now. <laughs> like, real estate is up 84%. Wow. At least in the state of Florida. Hey, wait, did you guys just hear that? 84%? Where are you going to live? Like, this is not a matter of, wow, I like, okay, y'all like, well, then you, okay, so you feel me. We can't get rid of our cheese. Okay. I mean, you guys get yeah. what I'm saying? This is like, like, like this is, this has now become all survival. And it's not like we said, like, they're saying, oh, we hit the worst of the worst. No, it's, it hasn't gotten there yet. Hmm. So I, so listen, you know, I said, I said this, I said this, you know, today, cause I just, I feel like the only way we're going to get over this money issue is if we're very transparent about money. Yeah. Okay. And, and I'll just finish off by saying this, Avi. So, you know, I have, I mean, I won't go through all my financial you know, dealings, but I do have an account um, that is a, it's a, it's a, I guess like a mutual fund slash liquid account that I have access to the money at any time. That account, um, at least at one point, had a million dollars in it. I've never taken out anything from that account, okay? I checked that account this morning. That account is under $700,000. Now, I understand that some of y'all are well, I like to have that problem. Well, okay, here's my point. The point I'm trying to make with this 
is that that account over the last 90 days has lost 30 something percent. By the way, my stocks, they're down like 50 to 70 percent. Crypto, hmm. it's down quite a bit as well. What I can tell you is that there is something that is tried and true. And it's not that. You know what it is? It's serving each other. Now, you all are dietitians. And you all saw problems for people. And this is not like 2008 when we were dealing with the financial crisis, the housing bubble. What we have just gone through over the last two years is a health crisis. So who should be at the front line of that? Who should be solving problems? That is the one thing that is recession-proof. Hmm. And if you aren't doing anything to solve problems during a time where the biggest crisis is actually your wheelhouse, then I don't know. I, then I don't know what to tell you. What, what I can tell you is that you solving problems for others and raising your income is a recession-proof way of always making sure that you protect yourself. And so that's what this is all about. Cool. 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 Yeah. This, geez, we can, I mean, we can keep on talking about this because I think this is so important. <laughs> at, this, at this point, it's not even like, I, I think, I, you know, I just will, because I, I do have a, I do got a class in two minutes. Okay. With our students, okay. But, okay. 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 <laughs> but, but I think, Absolutely. I think, I think, I think the, the big takeaway here is that it's no longer like, oh, it'd be nice to do this or it'd be nice to have a business. It's like, like you said, it's, you, this is like, this is it, right? It's, it's survival at this point with the, the, the rate that everything is going up. And what, the one thing that's not is, is your salary, right? You have to take matters into your own hands and, and yeah. this is how you do it. So for those of yeah. you uh, who, who really want to learn uh, how, how to do that, then I, I really hope that I see you there next week. So uh, go ahead and comment, raise your income. I'll get you the deets. You'll join us for Nutrition BizCon on Sunday. Uh, and, and we'll share some of the secrets with you um, that can really truly make a difference in your life. So Greg, thank you so much uh, thank for, you, brother. for this. Super, super grateful. Uh, and uh, as always, I learned a ton. I'm sure everyone else did. Go ahead and put your number one takeaway. Uh, let Greg see those takeaways um, after, after the fact. So um, awesome. Thank you. All right, brother. Take it easy. Bye. Okay.